So here we're looking at the, the coast of Carpinteria. We're looking down coast. We're looking towards the city of Carpinteria on Carpinteria State Beach. As we spin, you see we start to leave some of the developed area and get to the remnant marsh. So you see um, now that's Ash Avenue, the Ash Avenue Restoration. As we keep uh, scrolling here, looking more up coast, we get to um, the more the main core of the marsh. This is Carpinteria State Reserve, a UC Research Reserve. Um, also, part of it is controlled by the State Lands Commission and some local entities, but this is the core of the salt marsh. You can see um, the fresh water source coming through here down, and then we hit the, um, the ocean right here. We're recording this uh, in uh, late, no late October after our first very gentle first gentle rains of the season. It wasn't even really rains, I'd say just light drizzle, but the first significant ones. Um, and if we, if we go to the mouth, if we fly to the mouth, you might be able to see some discolored um, water because of the, the recent rainfall. But again, it wasn't that much. So we don't see a huge amount of discoloration. If we'd had a, 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 our first significant rains of the years, we would see off to the left here as we're looking a large, a brownish, grayish plume of sediment that would push fairly far out into the uh, salt water. As you can see, the connection is relatively small. So this means both water going out is gonna be uh, going through a contained, a relatively a narrow area, but it also means that um, water can't come in quite as fast also when we have, say, a higher tide bringing water into the system. Um, now, uh, one thing we see, even though the vast majority of this wetland has been destroyed, the essentially most of what we would now consider the city of Carpinteria is over um, marsh. But what we can see is there is still some natural um, uh, sinuosity to these channels. We do see there is still um, a good amount of vegetation. Uh, what we would expect in a, in a more extensive marsh is to have an even greater patchwork or diversity of habitat. So we see some mud flats, salt flats off to the left right here, but by and large, it's mostly closed canopy vegetation. It's mostly pickleweed um, and stuff of that nature, which is cool, it's all good, but it just suggests that this area doesn't get maybe quite as much disturbance as we otherwise would expect in a more um, uh, well-functioning uh, system. Uh, the system is, is fine. This is a fine salt marsh, a relatively um, a well-functioning salt marsh, but nevertheless, we do see deviations from the, uh, from the traditional area. Now, as we start to spin and start to look across, we're leaving the main uh, core of the marsh system. Okay, then if we pause here for a second, you can see some of the sinuosity of the tidal creeks. The, the S-shaped thing right there is the tidal creek. Off to the left is the main channel. That is more um, artificially controlled and influenced by, by people. And if we keep looking to the left here, we get to uh, the Ash Avenue restoration. Now, this is the area that we started restoring in 1997. And here, if we look a little bit more straight down, um, well, actually, first you'll see are surrounded by lots of development, right? Lots of uh, hardscape, lots of housing, etc. But as we continue to look down, what you see is in our restoration a lot more uh, complexity in terms of the tidal creeks. Obviously, the ones uh, uh, in the middle here uh, are a bit more um, hard-edged, a bit more square-like. Those are ones that were constructed. Um, as we go through time, we're expecting those. Um, uh, channels to become a bit more uh, soft. The the um, flow of water to, to take off some of the outer edges, deposit stuff on some of the inner edges, etc. and uh, get more um, curvy. We also see that the vegetation here on Ash Avenue and the Ash Avenue site, which is only on the order of about 20 years old at this point, um, is, is, is great, is looking good, but it's not quite the same um, uh, situations we have on the main marsh. Partly that's because we have more uh, upland, more high elevation areas, so we have a bit more topographic diversity. It's also because this is an area that is um, uh, more experiencing some more of the disturbance. And so this, in addition to getting fresh uh, freshwater sources that might be connecting from the creek, this is also getting a lot of runoff from streets and things of that nature. Um, so we have, uh, we also have a lot of recreational opportunities here that people can partake of. So this is the Ash Avenue restoration. And as we, as we come back towards the beach, what we'll see is um, both the, the um, 
development and, and all that of the city, but we also see um, clear some of the trail networks. So these pathways through the upland part of the salt marsh, those are uh, intentionally put in for interpretation, recreation, etc. And you'll see that they're pretty closely, pretty well connected to the beach, to the public sandy area of the beach. We would love there to be dunes in between this marsh and the beach instead of the, the houses that we see but uh, we can only do what we can do at this point. Um, nevertheless, uh, this is uh, Ash Avenue and the Carpinteria Salt Marsh here in Carpinteria, California.